Hello, everybody. So, today I am going to show you how I cut up my plastic bags. Just, you know, regular old plastic grocery sacks that, you know, we use them for everything, but they also shred and we end up throwing a bunch of them away. Or take, you know, hopefully taking them to the recycling. But I use them for um, crocheting projects. So I'm going to show you how I cut up my bags to make plarn. I hate that word. Um, it's plastic yarn um, for use in projects. What I've been mainly using it for is um, rugs and mats for my bird room, which is where I am right now. You can hear my little birdies in the background there. Hopefully they won't get too noisy. <laughs> but um, here's one of the rugs that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> this one's a, a six stitch Tunisian spiral crochet rug. Um, so that's been kind of fun to work on. But anyway, you can see this is about how thick the yarn is. So it's, you know, between a fingering and sport weight, I guess. Um, if, when I'm working with Tunisian crochet, you can use a, a lot um, thinner yarn to get a dense fabric, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, that's what I've been using this for because in the bird room here, we've got little birdies flying around and they poop. And poop sticks to things, but it doesn't stick to this. All I have to do is give it a stretch, pops off, I can vacuum it up, dump it in the trash, whatever. So anyway, that's what I've been using it for. And this is how I make it. Okay, so we've got our plastic grocery sack all kind of laid out flat here. I've got the pleats all lined up properly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the bottom seam just for this pleat so that I can open that out. Okay, so I've got that opened out like so. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm back here. So I'm going to be working this way. So just keep that in mind that you're kind of watching me upside down. Um, and then I take this edge and I fold it up to right about where the pleat line is. Can you see that line there? Maybe a little bit further up. Um, so I'll fold it up like that and I'll make sure that I've got this, this seam here is going to be past this edge. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being nitpicky and, and detailed because I find that when you pay attention to details, things go a lot smoother. So you've got your seam past that cut edge and we're just going to keep folding it until we've got a nice small stack of plastic. All right, now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off the rest of that seam there across the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to cut my width and I've been doing about an inch and a quarter for the projects that I've been doing. And I'm only cutting through this folded bit. Just the folded bit. Because if we cut all the way through, then you just end up with um, a bunch of loops. Um, and in order to join loops, you have to do a knot of some sort and I don't like working with knots I think that's no good so I am going to cut this bag into a big spiral ultimately okay we've got one right there and then you can see where I'm I've gotten to the point where my handles are so I'm going to cut that all the way across. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got our 
jellyfish bag here. And so now I'm gonna open up this section where we haven't cut. And I'm not, let me see, do I have something that I can put under there to make it so that you can see it better? I don't think I do. Okay, so you can see that we've got all of these cuts and they're lined up like, you know, across from each other, obviously. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here and we're gonna cut diagonally over here. So I'm gonna start doing that. Just starting here, we're gonna cut diagonally over. And then we're just gonna keep doing that. Start at the next bottom cut and cut diagonally up to the top cut. Bottom cut up to the top cut. And now I'll try and do this quickly so that I can show you just how big of a piece of yarn we can get from this one bag. And um, when I was little, I had an across the road neighbor that was, you know, summer, summer vacationer, um, neat little old lady. And I, of course I would go over to her house to see if she had cookies. Uh, <laughs> but one day I went over to visit and she was working on a bread bag rug. Um, where she had taken all of her old bread bags and cut them up just like this. And I have one of those going right now too. Just as we use up our bread bags, I cut them up and take um, that crochet project with me in my bag. And whenever I have to go somewhere where I'm gonna be waiting, it's an excellent waiting room project. Okay. There we are. And now we've got this long, continuous piece of plastic yarn. And, you know, obviously it looks it looks like a flat strip, but when you work with it, it, it bunches right down to a nice round yarn. And if you wanted a thicker yarn, you could always... Um, I don't know that I would cut the strips thicker just because of how I know that the plastic behaves in the diagonal cuts. Um, I think what I would do is hold two strands together to work. Um, and you could probably get some pretty cool color effects doing that too. Um, that way, you know, if you're holding two strands together, you've got more of like a worsted weight yarn. Um, which you know, I think I think would be perfect for working on all kinds of neat stuff. So you can use this in just about any knitting or crochet project. Um, hopefully, I will get around to showing you my cool new mitten design, which is plastic on the outside and yarn on the inside, using a technique called Tunisian crochet in the round. And that uses one of those double-ended crochet hooks. So I'm excited to show you guys that because they turned out really cool. Um, so that's, that's that. That's how I do this. Hope you have a great time playing with your yarn. Talk to you later.